Though the Nintendo Switch 2 has not technically been officially announced yet, we got some glimpse that a Switch successor was going to be announced in the form of the most PR advised tweet I have ever seen in my life. This just felt extremely out of the blue to me, which of course led to the rumor mill going back into gear about what exactly this system was going to be like. And very recently, we might have actually found out from a Chinese leak. Now let me explain. It was hard enough finding these images for myself. Honestly, even harder than getting a game by Nintendo before release. And that says something to the validity of how real this leak actually is, because they're willing to bury it like the plague. But I actually have a differing opinion of this leak than most YouTubers, and that's because I don't think it's exciting at all. All right, I know, put the guns down, hear me out. The first thing we find out about the system from these leaks is that it's slightly bigger than the original and it has slightly bigger buttons. Overall, a positive change, and I think the size of the original Joy-Cons were a bit too small. Wolfden actually made a video recently kind of replicating the shape and size of these things, and he said there was barely any difference. If you blindfolded someone and told them to use this, they probably wouldn't even notice a difference. They'd probably think it was a a regular Joy-Con. So take that news with a bit of a grain of salt. There are no added buttons this time around, except for larger SL and SR buttons, which nobody used anyways, let's be honest. And what seems to be some kind of magnetic replacement for detaching the Joy-Cons, which I have no idea how to feel about. It will also apparently keep the kickstand from the OLED model, which if you haven't experienced before, is perfect. And speaking of the OLED model, you could almost argue that this is a down from the Switch OLED, as while the screen and form factor might not be as big, the screen was definitely better than the 8-inch LCD that were rumored to get with the Switch 2. I would have to see whether or not the resolution and handheld mode would actually get much of a buff this time around, but Digital Foundry actually reported that the Switch 2 will have a custom NVIDIA 239 processor, which, for those of us who aren't nerds, means that it will reasonably run a game like Death Stranding at 1080p, with an average of 35 FPS. And when you compare that to something like the PS4 or the PS4 Pro, it's almost identical in terms of specs. The PS4 consoles aren't known to be pushovers in terms of experiences either, so that's honestly very good news for the Switch too. Unknown whether or not it'll actually have 4K, but that's not as important to me as everyone makes it out to be, so long as the games actually run well. In docked mode, the system will apparently be clocked faster than we expect, and undocked will be clocked crazy low. This might be good in terms of preserving battery life, but I hope Nintendo gives us the option of a high fidelity mode where you prioritize resolution and having a performance mode where the game you're playing has a higher frame rate. Literally every other console on the market has these options for their games, and I think Nintendo would really benefit from a system like this. We're also supposedly getting 12 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigs of internal storage, which yes, is miles better than the 64 gigabit of of the original system. However, in this day and age, I could make my damn 3DS have one terabyte of micro SD card storage for a decent price. And here's the time for our obligated wishful thinking section. I first of all wish that Nintendo would just give us custom themes. I don't care whether or not they'll charge me a couple bucks like they did on the 3DS. The Switch UI already looks and sounds great, but I think it would benefit from custom themes with music and sound effects. I don't like this trend of minimalism coming from big tech companies, and the same thing happened in the Switch between the PS4 and the PS5. If just one video game console would let me have a custom theme, it'd immediately separate them from their competitors in a good way. I mean, hell, don't even get me started on how company logos are going right now. I think the Switch 2 could benefit from a bigger backlog and a proper way of purchasing older Nintendo titles, but I know damn well that's not going to happen. If anything, the Switch Online membership will probably probably get a buff with GameCube or DS games, and I want them to keep the OLED screen going forward, even as a separate model that you have to pay more for. I want a brand new Mario Kart game around launch, as well as a new Splatoon game, since both recent games have come to a close, and I don't want any of them running at 30 FPS with frame dips. Listen, I'm a simple person like many of you, and most of my wishes could be done practically overnight. Really makes you think, huh? So, let's be honest. 
list. There's no way any of you are going to buy the exact same games from the Switch on another system. Nintendo obviously knows this, and they're going to do something about it. I do think that Nintendo will offer backwards compatibility with the original games and cartridges, which is also mentioned in these rumors. I think right now most gamers are conscious about preserving their collection going forward, and while Nintendo's eShop can delist games at any time, I think it's a bit ridiculous to think Nintendo is going to make us repurchase a game that came out this year on a console that's coming out next year. It's weird how this rumored system has two USB-C ports as opposed to one, but I suppose that makes some kind of sense as not only would you be able to charge it from the bottom through the dock, you'd also be able to charge it coming out of the top in a system that makes more sense to handheld mode. Nintendo's president referred to this system as the Switch successor, and that makes me think that the Switch would be part of the name. So here's what I think Nintendo's strategy going forward will be, copying the most successful tech company in the world, Apple. Every once in a while, a revolutionary product comes along that changes everything. Calling it iPhone. Apple is well known in the tech space for their innovation when it comes to the iPhone. And even though that might not seem related to the discussion of the Switch 2, I think there's a lesson Nintendo could learn from this. You see, the iPhone revolutionized the smartphone industry at the time. The exact same feeling I saw in 2017 when the Switch first came out. The excitement of everyone waiting in line, waiting to see exactly what this console handheld hybrid was actually actually about. Hell, I took off school early and sat there right outside the GameStop door for what felt like over 10 hours just to buy one. Some guy even wore a Link costume and started vaping in anticipation. When I got that first Switch of mine, I was over here playing Breath of the Wild, Snipper Clips, Super Bomberman R, Shovel Knight Spectre of Torment even launched on the system as a timed exclusive, which was honestly my favorite campaign in that entire game. There was nothing like the Switch at the time, and to be honest, in the past 7 years, the tides have shifted. You have all of these really powerful PC handhelds on the market, including the Steam Deck for as low as $400. I think Nintendo honestly has more of an uphill battle this time around, for getting people genuinely excited for another system of theirs. Sure, the games are always going to be good when they plan them out for launch. Heck, even the OLED launched with the best Metroid game of all time. No, I'm not sorry. And in the last Last year, Nintendo has clearly been holding a lot back because, minus a few games this year, it's been extremely dry. And that doesn't even just go for Nintendo. The Nintendo Switch is going to be their forever system from now on. Like the iPhone, maybe every so often you'll have older generations not having support for newer applications, and there's going to be major upgrades. But most of the time, it will just be improving on what's already there. I'm not sure Nintendo wants to go with yearly models or anything, but I don't see anything crazy happening with the Switch 2, like an ungodly second screen. But remember, it's up to you whether or not this thing will be worth your money. Just remember not to get caught up in the hype.